Now, it's time to engage. New Fire Emblem game is out, and that can only mean one thing. I'll be in a constant fear of whether the new game will be something incredible or something even worse than Fates. So, what do we have here? Alright, no matter what I'm about to say in this video, there's one thing I wanna make clear. Despite how much I love this franchise, I was not excited at all waiting for this game to release. And the main culprit of that is the game's art style. When the game was first revealed, I was like, oh, new Fire Emblem. Cool! But just as I said on my React video, this game felt like... When you go to a video game store and you see a bin full of games nobody wants to buy, and then you see an anime game called Dragon Fantasia 3 Turbo Max, the most generic thing imaginable. And that's how this game made me feel. If it didn't have the name Fire Emblem, I wouldn't even bat an eye at it. I know Fire Emblem is not known for having a very consistent art style, but this is the one that really caught me off guard and took me a lot to get used to. At first, I felt it was trying too hard to be cool and original because almost every character that was shown was very over design, if that makes sense. It's like a lot of characters have so much of these things that in theory are supposed to be cool, but when they are excessively combined, they are too unappealing for me and of course, they feel so out of place even in a medieval fantasy setting. The art style was way too weak for my taste. And I don't mean to throw shit at the main artist, Mika Picasso. When the game was close to release, she would upload a daily photo of some of the game's characters. That told me she was genuinely passionate about this game, and that earns nothing but my respect. But if I have a preference, I have a preference. But you know, something crossed my mind. I had a similar mindset with Cinelite Chronicles 2. While that game has designs I consider terrible and are way too weak, that didn't stop it from becoming one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. So who was to say Engage couldn't do the same? But then there was another thing. Engage wasn't catching my attention at all, if I am honest. It's not like Three Houses, which, yeah, at first I didn't have much hopes for it. But every trailer that they showed made me more and more excited for it. Engage was actually the opposite for me. Every time I learned something new, it felt like a red flag. From the characters that only seemed to jerk you off, the generic defeat evil guy story, other things that reminded me of Fates and of course, that art style that just wasn't doing it for me. I will say now, I only got this game out of obligation. I know Fire Emblem always does well on this channel, so why miss a chance? Still, this is one of my favorite franchises of all time, if that wasn't obvious. So it's only fair I give this game a fair chance. When I put it on my Switch for the first time, I remember thinking, please prove me wrong. Please put all my worries to rest. Tell me this isn't just Fates 2.0. So, is this Fates 2.0? The answer is yes and no. The gameplay is phenomenal, holy shit! If there's one thing I can tell they put all their effort in, it's here. If you have played any Fire Emblem game in your life, then you shouldn't have any problem jumping into this one. But Engage still brings a unique set of mechanics that set it apart and overall make it one of the most solid experiences in the franchise, at least from a gameplay standpoint. Unlike Three Houses, Engage brings back the weapon triangle with a unique twist. If a character were to start combat against a unit they have an advantage over, they can inflict a break status on them which forces them to drop their weapon, leaving them vulnerable for the next combat. This is a significant change because you can no longer get away with placing a strong unit that can wipe out everyone. If said character is at a disadvantage and they get a break status, it leaves them open for the kill. But that's not all. Just like previous games, all units are divided in categories, from infantry, cavalry and flyers. But now there's even more categories and I really like the effort in making all of them more unique. You have backup units which can do chain attacks for cheap damage on enemies, cover units who gain more terrain bonuses, armor units that are immune to the break effect and so on and so on. I really love this change, it was a small twist that added a ton of depth to the gameplay. These things have always been important in previous games, but Engage gives them a whole new significance. Weapon Triangle is way more important than ever before, and the type of unit you're using can make a difference between surviving or losing a unit. This makes strategies from other titles obsolete, forcing you to try new ones and make risky choices, which really makes those victories all more satisfying. But nothing else excels more than the main gimmick of Engage. Engaging. 
So in this game, the new characters can call upon the power of previous protagonists, giving your units boosts in stats, unique skills, old weapons, and even special techniques. Things that can completely turn the tides in battle. What I love so much about this mechanic is how unique almost every ring is. Marth is your standard swordsman that focuses on speed and avoiding attacks. Mikaya, whose healing abilities make every other healer look pathetic in comparison. Violet, who offers great support and can refresh teammates without the need of a dancer. Or Sigurd, who just straight up breaks the fucking game, it's insane! I can say, almost all the rings are incredibly useful and very fun to use. And yes, that even includes Corrin. But my absolute favorite part about all of this is that every single character can wear whatever ring they want. There is no limitation. Game tells you that the Roy ring belongs to Diamond? Too bad, he's wearing the Erika ring cause I felt like it. The Celica ring does great on magical units, but you know, I'm gonna give her to my armor knight just because I thought it'll be funny to see her teleport. Everything I mentioned so far makes Engage sound like a game that makes you overpowered, but here's the thing. The enemies also have access to all of that! Even when you take into account all these new mechanics, emblem rings, and how flexible it is to build your units, the game still offers a solid challenge. There were some chapters that I swear had my heart racing just because of how intense they could get. Engage really forced me to think on the long run, be well prepared, and to remember every single mechanic, because more often than not, one small thing could make the entire difference so I could survive one turn. I want to make something clear though, I play this game in hard classic, so I don't know how easy normal mode is or how ball kicking hard maddening mode is, but given a friend of mine spent over 90 turns in one map, I guess I can have an idea. But at least from my experience, hard mode delivered a difficulty curve that, as a long time fan of the series, left me immensely satisfied. It's not all perfect though, there are a few gripes that I really fucking hate about the difficulty. For example, all the bosses in the game have at least two health bars. You have to deplete one to move to the other, and I wonder, why was this a thing? Almost every single boss in the game is already challenging on their own. Sometimes you need your entire army to jump on one guy just to deplete one health bar. These extra bars feel like an artificial way to increase difficulty and lead to a lot of trial and error. It gets even worse when more than two bosses attack you. Made even worse because in the late game some regular enemies also have more than one health bar. So yeah, I really hate that honestly. Another complaint that I have are the skirmishes, which for some reason in this game are outright brutal. They are always miles more difficult than the story chapters. And they just throw all the good design of the game out of the window, because they always place you in the most disadvantageous zones and are filled with an absurd amount of overpowered enemies. I heard some people say that they were made that way in this game so you wouldn't abuse them. But here's the thing. That was the point of the skirmishes! Simple battles so that you could let your weaker units catch up and build supports, but here, no. You always need your best teams if you want to stand a chance, so it kinda defeats the point of skirmishes. And I think my last complaint, a nitpick more than anything, are certain maps. Engage overall has a really solid map design, rarely filled with stupid gimmicks, but every now and then it does pull off these slow and tedious ones. Funny enough, I think some of the worst are from previous games. There are paralogs where you battle previous protagonists in a map from their games. Some of them are very solid, but for others… well, let's say they pick some of the most infamous ones for some reason. You have the Leaf Paralogue with all its Federation Ballista Glory. Roy with the seemingly infinite wyvern reinforcements, Celica with the Cantor spam, or Corrin forcing me to play a Fates chapter. That one pissed me off just because it brought me Fates memories. So yeah, good fan service for sure, but they went a bit overboard with a few maps. At this point, I think you can tell I really enjoyed my time with Engage's gameplay. And sure, I'll say it, Engage has Sicily, one of the best gameplays in the entire franchise. But at first it wasn't enough to make me appreciate the game and I have a good reason for that. For me, Fire Emblem is a combination of three things. Gameplay, story, and characters. My top three games in the series include Radiant Dawn, Three Houses, and Blazing Blade, because those games deliver in those areas incredibly hard. And while Engage's gameplay was good from the get-go, at first I fucking hated my time with it, and the story and characters were to blame for that. But before you get mad, please hear me till the end. When I was streaming this game on my Twitch for the first time, I was outright suffering my whole way through. A friend of mine jokingly said, 
This game gives Fates haters PTSD. And yeah, I think that's accurate because everything about Engage was giving me horrible flashbacks. From the protagonist being a dragon, the chosen one who will save the world. Having these characters constantly talk about how cool the main character is just for existing, on top of them having one personality trait that they embrace at full force. Even small things like how most of the cast is royals and their two retainers. This entire thing was telling me, oh yeah, we are doing fates all over again, except that you don't have to pay for three shitty routes. At this point I was inhaling full copium thinking. Okay, let's just give it time, I'm still quite early in the game, I'm sure things can only go up from here. And then there was the story, being the most simple, safest and uninteresting thing in the world. And don't misunderstand me, there's nothing wrong with simple stories, but at least give me something to keep me engaged. <gasps> Just as an example, Dragon Quest XI has a very simple good versus evil story, but it's one I really like because the characters are so likeable and it has so many cool and memorable events. Engage at first had me brain dead because the story was so predictable and super cliche at times. And please, don't bring up the excuse of, Fire Emblem never had good stories. If you ironically say that, first, stop hurting things you hear online. Second, you're wrong. Third, you're an idiot. And then there was the characters and the grinding. I was so shocked when I saw how short the supports were in this game, with so many of them amounting to nothing more than boring slice of life events. Some characters outright gave me Fates vibes, in the worst possible way, just because of how one dimensional they were. The dialogue was so different from the previous games that, look, for me there is a difference between being lighthearted and cringe, and Engage just straight up landed on the cringe side. Not as bad as Tokyo Mirage Sessions, but still cringe. I genuinely couldn't stand it. Any word that came out of these characters' mouths just caused me brain damage. Hiya Papaya! Hiya Papaya? Huh, I've never heard that one before. At this point I thought, yep, it's Jober. This is literally fates all over again. Good gameplay mechanics, but that's about it. Everything else will just continue to get worse. So I pressed on, I continued to play, feeling defeated for a few more chapters, and one day during a stream session people started to notice something. I was actually enjoying myself, and no shit, they were right! I found it hard to believe it at first, but I was genuinely enjoying everything that makes a Fire Emblem game so good for me. So what happened? I noticed something that completely turned my mentality around. Engage is a game whose story and characters are simple, lighthearted, and even cringe. But the game never pretends to be something else. You see, one of the main reasons as to why I hate Fates as much as I do, it's because of how pretentious it is. From the advertisements they did before release to the games themselves, they always show it in your face that, oh, this game tells a heartbreaking story about fighting your own family, full of these deep and complex characters, where you'll feel bad because the path you paid $40 for will have heavy moral consequences. By the way, don't forget to pay $29.99 for each of the other routes. And then you get three shitty games with three shitty stories where more than half of the characters were fucking unbearable and the world building was pathetic. But the games still act like they are deep and complex. Engage may be cringe and at times has some embarrassing dialogue, but the game knows what it is. It took me a while to really get used to it, but before I realized it, I was starting to enjoy that cringe, and not just that, the story at times could pull off some cool moments, and the cast started to grow on me when I noticed that everyone in this game is a fucking insane person. Chloe loves to eat tacos de tripa, Pandreo is a fur in disguise, and Citrine is literally just... Mr. B and I won't lie, I was actually laughing at some of these supports and more characters only made the variety even better, eventually having a better balance of comedy, drama and chill daily life events. Not all of them are winners of course, but I finally found myself picking some favorites because I honestly like them. This cast kinda reminded me a bit to Awakening's characters, perhaps a bit generic and one note, but it's hard not to get attached to some of them and at times they deliver some genuinely good stuff. When you make me love your Pepsi design main character who I mocked at first, you did something incredible there.
And this honestly surprised me, because back when Engage was first announced and I made a quick shelf about it, I was worried that the old protagonists would overshadow the new ones, but that wasn't the case! They have involvement in the story and some flavor text at times, but they never seem to steal the spotlight. If anything, one of the best things they do is deliver on the fan service. Any veteran of the series will no doubt enjoy all the small references, callbacks, unique weapons and ability names. One of my favorite details in the entire game is when a character is engaged with an old protagonist, they say quotes from said character. Most of them come from heroes, but it was a small detail that made me smile so much. You have Sigurd with his. One strike will decide it all. Ike with his iconic. I won't let anyone die. And Celica with the incredibly memorable. I didn't listen to my friends when they offered help, and I follow obviously evil guy to sacrifice my soul to Satan, and I almost got everyone killed. There's even this small gacha system in the game that I personally didn't find it intrusive, if I am honest. But I liked that you could summon characters from previous games. It was pretty cool because every single game in the franchise gets some love. Except Tokyo Mirage Sessions and the first Warriors game. Good. Engage was intended to be a celebratory title, and it achieved that with flying colors. Before I finish off, I just wanna point out the obvious. The Somnial, which now replaces the monastery from three houses, is still a chill place to unwind after battle. The activities are a nice distraction, and since the place is smaller, they usually go by a little bit faster, which is appreciated. The graphics are a huge step up from what Faultland delivered, I really like the environments and the colors. The 3D models are quite pretty once you get used to them, they're so expressive and full of life, and the combat animations are fantastic! Nothing more satisfying than pulling off a critical hit and seeing the characters go as nuts as they did in the GBA games. Fucking incredible. And finally, the soundtrack is a marvel. Very varied, with each team fitting the country it's supposed to represent, and complementing the atmosphere incredibly well. Fire Emblem Engage is a very curious game, the more I think of it, the more I notice. This game, in my eyes, is for Fire Emblem what Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is for the Xenoblade series, both being entries in one of my favorite franchises. At first I was pushed away by the super weep look of the art style and character designs. They have some story moments and humor that at times I find unbearable, but by the end of it, I was able to push through it all and I found a fantastic video game I really, genuinely enjoyed. And the more I played, the more I appreciated it. The gameplay only got better, the story had cooler moments, the characters were growing on me, and hell, just like Xenoblade 2, I started to appreciate many more aspects of the art style that at first I despised. Engage turned my indifference and fears into joy and a bit of cringe, but a cringe I learned to embrace and one that at times had me beyond excited losing my mind. And I'm so happy to call this game another worthy entry in this franchise that, despite how much shit I throw at it, remains one of my favorites for a reason. Now the question is, is Engage a top 3 in the series for me? Not very likely. But is Engage a top 5? Maybe? But I still need more time to digest it. But I can totally see myself doing another playthrough. And I'm more than excited to see what more DLC they will add, and hopefully it will be just as good as the base game. So, yeah, at the end of the day, I think you can tell that Fire Emblem Engage really, truly engaged me.